paying the blood angels in 30 minutes. So I'm paying a sponge. Now, uh, some of you may be asking what kind of a sponge this is. It looks like this. It's called a painting sponge. You can find them in nut stores. Sometimes these are for car washing and things like that. An important thing to note, not everyone's going to be able to paint it in 30 minutes. If you're painting slower, don't worry about it. This model is painted very, very fast due to the fact that it's a Tardis Serpentary. That's a lie. It's a Kata Faraki Chiti. Kata Free Chiti. It's very fast due to the fact that we are painting very little details. It's essentially red with a little bit of black and a tiny bit of gold. You can use similar colors. You can use these identical colors, but don't feel pressured into getting the exact same brand. One thing you do have to note is be careful by mixing white into your red. That'll just make it pink very quickly and desaturate the color. I started off by grabbing a damn sponge and applying Vallejo's black red to it. When applying a base color, I always work very wet. That makes sure that the paint has an easier time flowing into all the recesses, resulting in a fast time to base coat the model. Using the same sponge, not washing it or cleaning it off in any way, I added some deep red from AK onto it and applied it to the model in the exact same manner. This time, I'm not using the underside of the model, I'm just trying to coat it from the top, essentially beginning to use the model to highlight. I grabbed a smaller sponge and used deep red from AK on its own, essentially applying an edge highlight to the parts of the model where I want the final highlight to be. I'm trying to follow the guideline of using a model as a cylinder and trying to go for the shoulders as just the edge and not going into the deeper parts of it, allowing more variation in between the color. As red is a pretty weak color, I made sure I went back for a second coat. Even though it looks very bright, it's still very wet. Once the paint dries up, it'll become much more dull, so having a second coat will ensure that it's nice and bright. I grabbed some Scarlet from Liquitex. It's essentially a red mixed with a tiny bit of orange, so it still looks quite red without going into the yellow spectrum heavily. I used a fresh bit of sponge just to make sure the color was coming out in its true bright self. I applied a tiny bit of moisture to the sponge just to make sure it's not dry and there's no uh, texture being left behind by the sponge as a result. I'm using very little pressure and sometimes going over the exact same spot twice over just to make sure the pigment actually got onto the model. Next I grabbed some Vallejo Basic Skin Tone and mixed it onto the Scarlet. This is not technically a white so it doesn't desaturate the color quite heavily and still make sure we have a highlight that feels red in nature and provides a really saturated, vibrant look. I'm following the exact same path as before, using even less pressure and sometimes having to go over the exact same area two to three times. But I'm doing this very fast. I'm not waiting for the paint to dry as there's no need for that. Since the coats are very thin, by the time you go over the model, the paint has already fully dried. Then I simply grabbed Vallejo's black and covered all of the weapon and details in it. For the gold, it's Vallejo Metal Color Gold and Green Stuff World Antique Gold Pigment. You add the two colors together and essentially start mixing. You have to mix very thoroughly, as if you don't mix it well enough, you'll have chunks of pigment left on your paint, which will be quite terrible. But if you do mix it well, you'll have an absolute magical gold. The best part about this gold is the fact that you can apply it in a single coat, and the paint flows very well, you never feel like you're scratching the model and just trying to scrape the gold onto it. It flows very well. This part actually took almost as much as painting the entire red, just because the fact that you really don't want to miss with this gold, as it'll be very difficult to fix your mistakes. So I take my time with this part and don't rush it whatsoever. Take as much time as you need. There was a little bit of gold overspill in the shoulder pad, but I'm not worried about that part specifically, just because I'll be using streaking grime. I then used Vallejo Metal Color Gun Metal to apply it to all of the weapon parts and the top rocket launcher on top. Actually, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I presume it's a rocket launcher, yeah. As well as applying some of it to the back vents in the armor, just to give a bit more detail to the model. I then grabbed Streaking Grime for Panzer Gray and applied it to the entire model. I'm using a very thick coat of it, but I'm not going back for it. I'm just dragging what I have on the brush all over the model. Once I'm done, I allow the model to dry and then I'll be cleaning it off with a sponge. To clean it off, I'm using AK Odorless Thinner. It's the least toxic version of all the ones you can have, but you still want to make sure you don't get it on your hands and you're in a well-ventilated area. You have quite a bit of time to work on the model as you could easily reactivate the enamel within 24 hours. But it looks mostly dry after even a few hours. Once I'm done with this process, I usually always varnish my models within about two hours. This removes the unpleasant odor from streaking grime and makes sure the model is safe to touch. I then grabbed some black and went over all the bits I've already previously done. As streaking grime 
essentially stained those parts a little bit too much and I wanted that pure black on them just to make the model pop with the red. And here comes the dreaded part that I really didn't want to do, the face. I used Bugman's Glow from uh, Citadel and then used the exact same basic skin tone from Vallejo that we previously used in our armor. I did a very rough sketch for the highlights as I didn't care what the model looked like up close since it's essentially designed to be looked at from the tabletop from several feet away. I then went back with just pure basic flesh tone just to highlight the model even further. Then grabbing some black and painting the face mask. And then I used some asphalt from AK Interactive to base the model. And then just applying a tuft from Vallejo that's called Burn Grass or something like that, yeah. And we were done. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to answer all of the ones I can.